Okay, so in this episode, I'll show you how to make a decoder that decodes from binary to binary coded, dec binary coded decimal. <laughs> so basically, what that will be is you have your big binary input, which could be 20 or more lines that you have to decode. Now, you could do as I did over here, if you look right beh behind my head, the sandstone part over there, every single line that runs towards me is one decoded number. So I decoded what, like, I think I decoded 49 and then I just stopped because I didn't want to do anymore because it was just, ugh, so annoying. And that's not the system we want to use. We want to use a the binary to binary code decimal. This just codes from binary directly to um, <coughs> decimal. And that's why it's getting hideously big. Now, this way of decoding numbers isn't in any way particularly fast, but it's a great way to um, decode huge numbers and still keep the thing in a decent size. And I'm saying decent because, like, if you have 16 inputs like you have 16 binary inputs it would be like I don't know 50 times 200 blocks 5 or 6 high now um, yeah I guess I might as well just get into building this now just saying this behind here if anyone has a question is my one of my first calculators piston wires normal redstone I mean I was a noob back then, so since then I've evolved in many ways. It's kind of why I'm doing all these tutorials. So, yeah, let's begin. Um, yeah, uh, to start off, um, I'm just gonna say I am not really sure how this entire system works. Um, so I'm I know how to build it, and. I know how to like place things the right way, but I really don't know how the thing exactly works. Now wait a second. I want the carry out to be in that way, so I'll have to do this. No, that way the carry in there. It was right the first time. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just making a a full adder now. There's a reason I'm putting this torch here. That's to smarten everything up later, and you'll see why. It's just to make it more compact. Um, yeah. Basically, this is just the the average full adder. And I am um, yes, I turned this the right way. That up there. Another input there. And these two can connect. I uh, wait a second. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um gotta remember to place that redstone there. There's a redstone there. Now we got this figured out. I'm just gonna place box in it so it makes things a little easier. Um I'll be using wall edit to help me with this. Uh, I need to expand this. Oops. Expand one. Down two. Oops. Ugh. Just going so great now, isn't it? Um. Got those four covered. Got the blocks underneath covered. Okay. Um. Basically, what you do is you take this one and you stack it. You'll have a total of four of these. 
so like this make it one connect and then hit this last one so it isn't there anymore because we won't need it now <clears throat> for the wiring I will connect these like this now what I'm building this module for is the system is called left shifting and what it does is it shifts numbers to the left all the time and as soon as the output is greater than 4 it will subtract 3 don't ask me why I haven't understood the system all I know is that this thing is the greatest thing ever I've ever found to decode big numbers so basically what you do to you'll have a few different inputs like in binary here so I, uh, this will be equal to 1, the bit 1, bit 2, bit 4, and bit 8 um, and then um, basically so as soon as the number is higher than 4 which is this line here uh, it has to subtract 3 and to subtract 3 it has to activate these two so if I activate this line it will subtract 3 so if I say I have no sorry add 3 I'm so sorry for saying subtract uh, so I'll have 5 for example that would be above above 4 so then this one would turn on no, like, let's just look at the output oh, forgot to actually forgot to wire this up sorry about that there 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 and there so the output 1 and 4 which is 5 now then this would turn on 2 and that would then add 3 to that which would be 8 now, to do this, uh, I'm going to make a AND gate. Now, first of all, I'm going to make all these wires go down. Um, like this. This is going to be a hell, this video. But still, if people understand and just kind of get how I build this, it's going to be really easy for if you understand of course um, like that so we have these three now notice I have I took the outer one and the middle one, like the ones pointing to the middle and then the last one is to the middle too that's going to be the easiest for the left shifting by the way and for the actual wiring I'm doing down here right now um, yes. Now, first of all, I'm gonna do the AND gate. So, like, this output will say when the input is higher than 4. So, if it's 4, nothing happens. So, it's, it's not above 4. But if I activate the number 2, it's above 4, so it was 6 and above 4, so the torch turns on. But I haven't wired this up yet, so I have to wire this into the torch 2, so that if it says 4 and 1, like this. Now, let's just show you. The torch is off right now. Turn the 4 on, torch is still off. Turn the 1 on. The output is now higher than 4, the torch is on, and the same is for the 2. And it doesn't matter which of one of these, not, of these I turn on. Now, if the input is 8, then it should, no matter what, turn this over here on. Well, in the moment, this torch, but we'll connect this torch to this piece of redstone. And what I'm actually going to do to make this smarter is I'm not going to take this torch. But I'm actually going to take the signal around here, and I'll have to do this, get this down, three like this, and then I'll place a torch underneath this, so it'll power on for the moment. Oh, wait, sorry. No, I'll place a block here, and I'll, oh, goddammit, 
place a block underneath that, like that. And then I'll need the wire into this. Now we can't have this connect up here, so disconnect that. And the same is going to happen over here, so disconnect that too. Now what we have is this is uh, so the wire here, the turned on wire. Instead of having a torch there, it's just running over here, and the torch is then here. Now I still got to wire up the eight into both of these torches here, so they can uh, so if the output is higher than five, which is it, it is when it's eight, both of the these turn off, turning the torch on, and thereby adding three. Now, to do that, I'll have to wire one into here, but I'll also have to wire it into this here. And now this can't connect. And can't connect here either, so the, let's just test this. Um, so it will add three if the input is higher than four. So if it's three, oh, must have done something wrong. This is three. It isn't supposed to turn on. Why is this torch off? Um, oh, I see. Okay, I can't. Oh, I'm very sorry. Uh, this connection I can't make it like that. I'm gonna make it like this, so it doesn't connect with the one. So now, yes. Now, if it's three, it's not on. If it's four, it's still not on. If it's four and one, which is five, which is higher than four, it's on. If it's six, it's higher than four, it's on. And if it is 8, it is also on. Okay. So we got that working now. So, now we got the wiring figured out. Now, the thing is that this has to be stacked in both this direction and in this direction, depending on input sizes and output sizes. So, the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to give myself one space to do the wiring. What I mean by that is that this module would connect to the same module stacked afterwards. So this output here, well, actually input, but these are the it's the same place than here. So the next one of these could connect up behind this one. So, like th this input here would actually be this one, and then one of these would come after that. But you'll see soon, they'll be stacked. So, it's supposed to left shift. So, I'll start by going down here so we don't get a connection here. And so, it's, it's left shifting one to the left every time. So, I can't. Gotta get that up again. And someone's calling me on Skype. Give me two seconds. Yeah, um, I'm very sorry about that. Um, you left my Skype unaccessible. Now, to so the left shift here. It's supposed to shift one to the left every time, so this one would have to shift to this one. Like this. And we can't have any connections. And basically, this input here would get an input from over here. So um, let me just look. Yes, like this. And I need to connect these up too. And I can't have that connect up, so I'll do like that. I can't connect either, so I'll block there. Now it should all be shifting to the left. This is going here. Yes, this is going. There, yes, this there. This connects out, coming in on the other side into this. Yep. Now, um, let's actually test if this is right. So, yeah, let's mark this monstrous thing. 
uh, I know there's an extra output right there, but I'm not really gonna need that for now, so I'll expand down four and I'll expand one up. And I'll just stack this once and see if it connects. And this is and yeah, that's that's what we're talking about. The torches that mess up if they were sometimes that mess up if they were out there. For example, here this would connect with this, so that w now it just goes through here. Okay, so basically this shifts over left. This shifts over to the left. This shifts over to the left, and this one's just getting an input. Okay. Now, what you do is you mark this thing. The oh, sorry. Undo that. I want to expand by one. Now, depending on how many digits you want, so. I'm gonna take an example. Uh, I have eight um, binary lines of input, which is gonna give me a total of a three digit number. So I'll need to stack this three times to the left because I need three digits. So I'll stack it two more times to have a total of three. And if I figure right, I'll have to expand this 32 to capture the entire thing. I'm just checking that these are connecting up now. So like these connections make together. We we made this first one with four, and we made this one go one go out, one more, and then it connects to this on the next one. So like here's a space between two, and it will connect up. Now I'm just gonna check. We're not gonna need this, so I'll just hit this away. And what you have to do now is how many lines of input do you have um, so I have eight lines of input that would be eight but since I already have one here it will be seven and don't ask me why but I know for a fact you can subtract two more from that because of how the system works so I'll stack this five times for eight input so I'm, I would guess well, as a rule, you have you need the amount of these lines per binary input. So I would need eight of these to be totally sure that it works. But I know after a lot of testing that five is enough. So I'm gonna stack this five more times. So there we have it. Now gotta check whether it stacked everything correctly you see this thing is big really big and it's it's hard to understand but after you've come this far you actually don't need to do much more except for one thing so like uh, the one would never have to be decoded it will always just be a one in this system Sorry. Um, basically how this works is you get a I'll just take my mark the spots and one more here one more here now what you have is you have these four lines here you have four lines here four lines here and the one over here is actually unnecessary so these are the the binary outputs for your three lines so we we said in the beginning we want three digits and we have a eight bit input like eight lines of input the first line will connect to this so if you know binary you'd know the first line is always one now the inputs for all the others well you actually decide for yourself whether you want to take a repeater into here which I normally do or if you just connect directly to this redstone like you you connect to here I'm just gonna do that because then you're you are sure that it works 
Okay, so this is one, and this first one here is two, and this one over here is four, and the next one here, eight, and I guess you figured the pattern out by now. Sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, and now, oops, sixty-four. Here comes the fancy part. We have an input here, and we actually also have an input here. So you have two inputs here, so you can actually add this one to the two, 128, which would be the eighth line. So this is the explanation on why you can, can subtract the two extra lines. Um, so I'll give you an example now. So I'll add in 64. So right now it should decode the 64. I go to the end. Okay, so the thing is, you got to imagine that you're here. I'm just gonna like draw a square up here. So like. This, these goggles, that's your screen. It doesn't matter how you imagine it. It's just you're looking this way at the screen. So, uh, wait, this it actually has three digits, so I'm just going to draw one more of these. That's a one to write, whatever. So this one, f this four, four uh, line output would be to the first number. This one would be this, to the middle number. And this third one over here would be to this one. So you actually got to read them like this. Um, one, two, four, eight, one, two, four, eight, one, two, four, eight. So you just get the binary outputs from zero to nine. So the lowest will be nothing and the highest will be nine. So that would be eight and one. So what it's telling us here is this is a four since one, two, four. This is a four. So this will say four. And over here we have a two and a four, which is six. So we say 6 here, and over here is nothing, so it would be 0. So that would say 64. And if you remember what we put in over here, the 64 right here, that would be a 64. So this thing actually just decoded a 64. Now let's do a, a 128 too, just for an example. So we have the 8 over here, so the 8 is here the last output, a 2 here, so we have the 28, and we have a 1 over here, so which is the 1. So this thing is probably the best for decoding I've ever ever seen, but it's also kinda slow. Now in my calculator I'm building currently I have added this system for my one screen input. So I have two of these for the input and then I have a much larger one than this for the decoding of the actual output. Uh, this would normally be what you need to decode the, the actual output. So I'm just going to jump over and show you that now. So I'm back at my and my friend's calculator and the inputs are using the decoder we just built. So you see all the levers here, we have a lot of inputs. So I'm just going to take one random one for starters. So I'm going to 113. So the, that's the speed at, it, at which it's decoding. So it took like, what, about two seconds for the decode that. And I'm just going to take a random one, like 53 and the other one. See, that's the speed it's decoding at. Oh, did it go 53? It says 63. That's weird, maybe. Well, yeah, it's not a finished calculator. It's just some part of, parts of it are finished. Yeah, that's that's a bug I gotta fix. Now, to show you the big decoder, I'm not gonna show you the actual decoder because I'll do a showcase on the calculator later on my channel. But I'll just show you the actual decoding. So I'll multiply those two, which you thought which each other. So now the decoder over here will start working. And yes, I know it's very buggy.
but yeah. Um, that should be right. I don't know right now. Uh, I'm not really good at putting those things together in my head. But uh, yeah, now you kind of see what they, how they're used. So, like, yeah, I guess I could just show you the the outside of here. So, like, this is the big ass coder. Like, it codes the numbers into binary. And over here we have the, well, the, yeah, that, that's the thing we just built. So, that decodes the numbers, and that then runs into a binary to seven segment display coder. So, you're actually decoding twice. But this is still way more compact than any other design I can think of, at least. Um, and yeah, his the actual multiplier build and uh, did a multiplier tutorial too, and well, I showed this off. But yeah, I if you were to hook up a screen to something like this, you would need these coders where you code binary into seven segment display and hook them up to seven segment displays. But um, yeah, I hope you learned something from this video. Um, and uh, thanks for watching.